it can really get tickling and at the same time interesting when we off mic and talking behind the scenes, you know, the dynamics of life, especially when Moses Mbudia is in the studio and now my colleague <laughs> Janet, I think, is soon hosting this man on another platform away from Mata Sports. Anyway, let's talk about, you know, Mata's Volleyball, Kenya Volleyball Federation elections coming up on 29th of this particular month and is the deputy treasurer seeking... Uh, I don't know whether he's defending or he's not vying, but uh, we're going to speak a little bit of that as well as his ambition to, you know, uh, develop and initiate structures meant to, you know, develop and enable beach volleyball to grow. There was some addition in Mombasa. It went very well. It will give us detail of the same. And what really transpired and the transitioning of Kenya volleyball after the long-serving uh, former KVF president, Waitha Kakioni, departed and he was laid to rest in midweek in his home in Kiambu. Good to see you, Mbudi. How are you doing, man? All right, I can complain. I do not I have no intention whatsoever talking about what was behind the cutting. We are focused. We are focused. We are to talk about volleyball and to ensure that sports gets to another level. Yes, when it comes to growth, trying moments as the losing the president. Uh, Mr. Kioni, who was also the deputy president CAVB, and a member of uh, FIVB, and uh, deputy president, uh, second vice president uh, NOC. So it was it's a big gap that has been left by Waidaka Kioni, but that will be a story for another day. What do you remember him for? Because you worked closely, you worked together. And you I've worked with for Kioni for the last uh, 20, uh, 33 years. And uh, he's an amazing man. He does not, uh, what I can remember about him is never look at the, the rear window. Always look ahead. No matter how the bumpy, the, 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 the situation is ahead, make sure that do not waste time looking at the rear window. But there are so many other things that we shall discuss uh, maybe later on another program. About and, uh, the now let's talk about, you know, what's coming up. And it's raining, but I understand the volleyball fixtures currently under at Nia National Stadium, right? Very the poor planning, very poor planning, I must say, from the Department of SOS, uh, because we ought to have uh, booked uh, an indoor arena. But the indoor arena was booked by basketball because they have their playoffs, you and I know. And uh, it was done helter-skelter, maybe to sweet one, one owns whim. But uh, that's a story again for another day. It was poor planning from our end, and I own up as an executive member of uh, NEC. And because right now, as we're talking, they are out there. I mean, they're sheltering themselves because of the rains. Little did we know that uh, this should happen. And, and I think also, if, even if we do not have an indoor arena, we should be contacting the meteorological department to get to know about the state of atmosphere in the next 24, I mean, uh, a fortnight for us to plan well. And uh, uh, considering you've spoken about a critical point of, you know, uh, proper planning in advance yes. and uh, amid these weather conditions where it's raining unexpectedly, it's uh, quite unpredictable and probably them getting in touch with KMT is, is a necessity. Do you think we need to also improvise facilities going forward because there has been I scarcity of the same? Time, I mean, uh, it is overdue, we must say. I think as volleyball, we should also have our own arena. Yes. We can't just be sitting and expecting to book from Nyayo, uh, Kasarani, I mean, uh, and the, these other institutions that do have uh, their gymnasium. I, I think uh, time is ripe now for us to think of our own land and the construction of a simple gym, la gymnasium, like we have it in uh, Egypt, in Tunisia, in uh, Morocco, Algeria. I was in Italy. I was yes, they belong to Federation. I mean, why should we be beggars for the rest of our lives? At least we should have been able to open our own gym, have our league on, and then complain but I that uh, we do not have more than enough, but we have at least one of our own. Ken, as 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 a governor of uh, Daystar University, I understand, you know, in schools and colleges and uh, tertiary institutions, you know, sports is something that, you know, is 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 uh, draws a lot of attention and admiration from majority of students and I'm quite sure there are those who are passionate about volleyball. Is there you know, a drawback of a, a gymnasium for those who want to practice? How do they go about it? Uh, I think uh, from an institution we, we mainly see it's outdoors, completely outdoors. There is no indoor arena for us to do this and the competition that our volleyball team participates in the KUSA League, uh, it's always outdoors we see and uh, even though it's outdoors, there's still the, the thing of sharing between 
three or more sports. So, you know, it's not outright a volleyball pitch. It's not outright the volleyball players can come and say, it's our time to train here. So that also hinders their preparation in a lot of games, not only for institution, but I've not seen any other institution with uh, the indoor arena. So we always have to play volleyball outside. And uh, I think what uh, Mr. Mbudia said is right, because we need to assess before we plan. We need to know what's going to happen before we, we put the games out, because sometimes Weather condition can, can be extreme as today, they can be extreme in the rain, but they can also be extreme heat. So I think with proper planning uh, in the institution, we can uh, ensure that the outdoor volleyball grows to something that, you know, something that can develop into a national type of thing. Level. And that, that, that scramble for facilities, especially at the institutional level, considering that when it comes to sanctioned international competition seats, uh, an indoor sport completely, do you think failure to use a, a proper gymnasium for this training practice and now when it comes to competitive events you have to use facilities you're not used to can hamper the performance as well very soon i have been in this office now for the last five years yes. because of the delay we ought to have had uh, our uchaguzi last year in month of april now we are in april so and the last five years kenya has not hosted any single tournament international that tells you one thing. We do not have enough facilities. And because the number of times these people have come to, I mean, uh, to look at these facilities, they realize that we only have Kasarani as a gymnasium. Even the facility that we are using in Nyayo for basketball, it is actually meant for basketball. Because uh, the, um, the height is supposed to be of a certain level. To answer your question directly, we have not been able to host in the last five years. And there has not been that men mentorship because when I was young, I remember going to the gymnasium in, I mean, in Bombers of Kenya to see Kenya play against Egypt, Cameroon, Algeria, name it. Today, the young ones who are in primary school and secondary school, they have not seen any team from outside. Maybe the only advantage they have is the, the current TV and, uh, you know, and Google and what have you. But uh, seeing it live in Kenya, it has not happened because of what you're talking about, lack of facilities. It's the high time. We stop mass volleyball. Because what you're talking about at the university, that is mass volleyball. Even the type of a ball that we use indoor is different from what is uh, used outside. So it becomes very difficult even for the importers of the balls to know how many balls do we import for the indoor and how many do we import for the outdoor. So, and those balls are damn expensive. You and I know Mikasa ball goes at about 6,000. For the pimpled one for indoor goes about 8,000. So even planning, even for buying this ball, becomes a problem. It is the high time now. We move from outdoor. We go indoor. We only leave the outdoor game for beach volleyball. And you know that boils down to administrators of the sport. Someone was, was, was had written something this morning, and I was going through. And I think even our failure as Kenyan sports to grow and get to another level in terms of development is also attributed to what we have at the helm in charge of people, you know, who are supposed to govern and uh, see the administrative aspect of federations. Just pursuing self-interest at the behest of, you know, I would, uh, players. I double it up with the lack of resources in court. Because uh, the society is not the interest of Wachezaji ahead. We only think about our pockets. What do we gain when I go for all African games? How much money, how many dollars am I going to put in my pocket? I do not go there to study and find out what are the Moroccans doing to promote the game of volleyball about other games. And so when we come down here, when doing our reports back to the National Sports Council for it to be presented to the minister, what do I put down there for way forward? Instead of just putting down problem, problems, problems, we also look at way forward. And this has not been happening. And I can tell you, and I am saying this uh, in, in a blue day right, I think majority of us in sports, we are not after the development. We are after one, staying in power, taking the, I mean, the revenue. Once we retire, we normally get a comfort zone where we get, go to our safaris outside the country at the expense of a threat in this country. It's a matter of time, and take note of this. Uganda, they are going to beat us in the next few years because they have really uh, developed structures. We are talking in the month of April. All the athletes in Uganda are in camps. 
And they put the camps, the national coach, they get coaches from outside, and they pick one student who is well versed with the game. He is also attached to a given uh, camp. You, you see, these people are looking far. The Ministry of Sports is under the Ministry of Education in Uganda. But the assistant minister who is in charge of sports goes to the cabinet to talk about uh, issues in sports. This is how serious these people are. Where did I get this? Arusha, when we go, went for East African Games. Everybody from the Ministry of uh, Education and Sports, they were all there, including uh, the so Minister for Sports. Hand hand. Yes. The National Sports Council how was there. The situation back home in Kenya? That will be a research that you need to do uh, <laughs> because I, I leave it to you uh, because I'm also one, one, one part, of, uh, part of the system. I got uh, shocked because the National Sports Chairman of Uganda was there taking note, basketball, why are we not doing well? The Commissioner of Sports from Uganda was there. The minister in the court, because he's an assistant minister, was there. The Commission of Sports back home, the last time I remember was Gordon Oloch. Do you have uh, someone at the helm of that position right now? I did not come here to name names. Because <laughs> right now, the director, they changed that uh, term to oh. director of sports. Right now is Mr. Gitonga. But uh, as, as I've said, I did not come here to discredit those who are yeah, in position yeah, yeah. because I'll also maybe be there tomorrow if, uh, if the and time allows. And you never know how I'll also fare on. But I was saying, it is the high time we call ourselves a small meeting. Who are we? Who do we represent? What do we want? In the next 30 years, where do we want to go? If we do not have a strategic plan, my worry is Uganda, Rwanda, uh, Burundi, much as they don't have money, because they did beat our team in uh, Burundi just the other day, beach volleyball. Uh, Tanzania, they are waking up. Kenya will Rwanda, be... Rwanda, they are building facilities. Uh, and they, they have some Paul Kagame best. has been at the forefront. They have the best. The sports facility, if you're a chairman of uh, volleyball, you have a bus, you have an office. Do we even have an office, Kenya Volleyball Federation? You may not be aware. We don't. We use somebody's uh, office to do our meetings. But that's a story for another and, day. And, and, if and, we keep and, lamenting without giving solution, then we are done. I'm waiting. happy the, the current minister has said that once that house is complete, the, um, the knock house, we shall have all the federations there. But even before there, what, um, before we go there, what are we doing to we make sure that... Yes, yeah, what are we doing? By the time we go there, do we have our facilities? Because I, I think what's the role of government in development of sports? One, facilitation. Two, we should not be lamenting. The government wants it has given you a leeway to go to a country. After way it after PESA. If the government has given you a tick, you should appreciate that the government has given you an environment to do your, your activities. We cannot be flying from January to December. We have not been facilitated by the government. We do not have air ticket. What are we doing also from our end to make sure that we go to the government, we've managed to get the air ticket, what we cannot afford is accommodation in that other country. And uh, that way, we move as a unit. Ken, you and I probably would agree and read from the same script because as a product of Upper Hill, and you know this is a, a supremo when it comes to My having been a principal of some <laughs> pro prolific <laughs> high school in the country, you, 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 you must have seen talents rising through the ranks, but you know, immediately after they are done with school, you never get to see them afterwards. Not only in volleyball, rugby, basketball, football, and there is lack of continuity. Yeah, I think the follow-up from, from high school to university in terms of sports and looking at these sportsmen who are really great during the high school years is, is really, really low because you never see most of them breaking into the, 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 the league teams and making it even to university to play the same sport. It's really, really low, and I, I think that's because of, you know, there's too much, you know, dependence on your, your academic grade rather than the sports. Because, you know, you can be a great volleyball player and not be that good in academics. So that means they have to push you to get something, make something of your life with the volleyball. And that's what's not happening because people tend to quit even though they are, they are very highly talented. Because they don't see futuristic or something. Yeah, they, they don't see it as, as, a, as a career, something that they can live off, you know, for the rest of your life. So, you know, they end up just quitting and hoping for the best. But, you know, in terms of, you know, growing the sport and facilitation, I think that's where we really need to improve as a country because, you know, as Mr. Mbudi again was saying, you know, what are the people in those positions doing? 
because as much as government needs to step in, you cannot be highly dependent on government because we look at the other countries, the federations, be it uh, volleyball, football, they, they have the capacity to bring forward their own sponsors and their own partnerships to have them, you know, put something on their training gear to get them everything. So, you know, that falls down to the federation itself rather than government. So that's where the real, the real work needs to be done. I think to add on what he has said, very true, very good observation. And I'm happy that he passed through the hands of uh, Mr. Orero when Orero was the game, I mean, I was the deputy principal, Upper Hill, together with my son. And uh, in 1990, the best uh, athletes in Kenya Volleyball Federation were getting them from the university. In 1986, the deputy, the deputy president was the setter of Nairobi University here with the engineer, I mean, with the architect Rusweti, with the Hangati, Alfred, Alfred Hangati. The coach was uh, Onyango, the husband of Jerry Onyango, the lawyer. Uh, we had uh, very many other athletes that we get. Uh, Jeremiah Kioni, the MP Daragua, for a long time, he was top at that level. And they were moving to the Kenya Volleyball Federation from the university. Today, it's only one man by the name Kamara whom you're getting from uh, the university to the national team. There is total, completely disconnect between the university and uh, the current uh, federation. And uh, this is a uh, cause to worry. We cannot just be studying without uh, using, because when they are in that age, that is, their, that is their, when they are in their prime age, except maybe for the swimmers, because swimmers are supposed to be good at the age less than 24. So it is a cause to worry. And we should ask ourselves, starting with the president of KUSA, Mr. Moredi, whom you should call here and be able to synchronize whatever I'm talking about here. Why are we not manufacturing athletes from the university? What do we need to do so that at least they can join the national team? I know rugby has a few. I know other games have a few. But they are not as the numbers that we used to have. Even the president himself was in the volleyball team at the University of Nairobi those days. And it was a super. We're talking about 1990 and uh, late uh, 80s, including myself. I think I'm not, the, the show is not mine. This is yours. <laughs> you see, I'm really listening to your insights. And uh, what, what do we do for the future of these sports? And now that, you know, people who have been at the helm have not done much we can't really lament and you know grumble just like you indicated I want us, uh, to follow what the minister did say we sit down take a back seat look at uh, uh, the countries around us you know for a long a number of years we were training basketballers and volleyballers from south sudan you get my point yeah. until we came up with a rule in secondary school you cannot play a foreigner in one game when they are over, over three at a game. You can have three in the bench, but wale wanacheza kwa kiwanja only. Because we were just manufacturing uh, young ones from outside the country, from Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania. We realized, what are we doing? Wait a minute. This was uh, David Gugi. Let's restrict the numbers to make sure that we have our own in the field. That is point number one. Two, we must make sure that we also not copy, but be ahead of what Ugandans are doing, what uh, the Rwandis are doing. Some of the best facilities. We, we benchmark on the that is where we are going. The other country. years, we were taking our own to go and train uh, Rwandis. Do we have any now? single any single now expatriate in Rwanda? Soon we are going to import from Rwanda to come and train our own. It's a matter of time. But then the, your question is, what do we do? We need to sit down. We need a very serious politics scandal. We need a serious talk where we involve all the stakeholders without looking at how much money I'll be paid after that sem seminar. It is what I'll contribute, put down, and then have it used in future. Because I think we had taken how many years before taking part in Olympics and, the, 16, you know, Paul, Paul Bitok in, inspired the team? Uh, yes, Wataka Kioni played his part. The executive played their part. The support when they are going to the gym, sometimes we go down into our pocket to our support. Natafuta zile kukuzangu, Kenchik, the Savlons, and what have you. When they are in the camp, you psych them. It is a, is a effort of everyone. 
it is not just an individual. I'm mm. not saying that Bitok did not play a part because Bitok came how many days before before the, the preparation? Oh, yeah. Just a month before they went for qualifier in Cameroon. So it was an effort of everyone. And Kioni played a very great role. May his soul rest in peace because uh, he was persistent. When we do not have accommodation, we talk to the manager of, um, I mean, of Sports View, where he passed, I mean, where he had a problem, and uh, they would be accommodated there, then we pay later. So it is something that was an effort of everyone. The media also, you played a, a very great part. You encourage the young girls, you, you know, and then ultimately, our convection of volleyball made it to the Olympic. Our beach volleyball also made it. To the, that yes. is history in yeah. making. Yes. And these federations need to have their own revenue stream so that, you know, when it comes to accommodation of players, probably the government will come in handy when it comes to this international championship facilitation flights. But you see, these, these local uh, entities yes. and competitions, we can have our own kitty that, you know, facilitate the same. Is indeed supposed to be the case? I agree with you entirely. And uh, this notion of Kenya and Serekari's idea, Serekari's idea should die away. Because what you're supposed to be doing is uh, also coming. I agree with the minister entirely. We must tell the minister how much money we are getting from FIVB. Oh, Did he asked so. Yeah, of course. How much are you getting from FIVB? How much are you getting from CAVB? By the time we give you what we are giving you, we don't have to do the double payment. I mean, in Kenya, we have that problem. You've seen the governor's pay school fees for a, a, a student. The MCA pays for a st the same student. The MP pays for the same. <laughs> the, women rep, the women rep pays for the... And uh, then, Nashindo, is it pesa? Hatuwezi kaa chini in this structure yote. Ya governor, MCA, MPs, I mean, uh, women rep. Tuangalie, wale umelipia, ndiyo ni melipia. It is the same thing in sports. Then, once we put it on the table, that to say, Mekane, Kenya, Mepewa, development money, 20 million. We be a minister from today. We do not want you to help us in the, uh, for, I mean, in the hotel and the, the camps that we have across the board. That way, we shall move as a team. Otherwise, what is happening in Kenya? Tunaiba pesa kutoka kwa infuko, tunaweka kwa ingine. And then we kill our future. Your son, daughter, yeah. will not be able to develop in this country. To kiendelea na watu kama mbudia, kama wao ndio ofisi tuko nao. It's the high time. Ata nyinyi media, mutu scrutinize. Sema huyu mutu, does he really support sport? Or does he support his family and, uh, and his pocket? And Ken, I think uh, going forward, that will restore order in Kenyan sports because you've seen uh, what the government is doing and CS Sports Ababu na Mwamba because... Even WRC Rally Championship, he told the organizers, how can you be using 2.6 billion for a three-day event? And I think the same thing is asking Kenya Volleyball Fraternity on w to account on the resources yes. they get from FIVB. And yes. the same should, you know, across, trickle to across, across all federations. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. you look at the, the money that's given and, and you... Where most of it goes, you know, it doesn't go to the, maybe yes. the players, the, the technical bench, you know, it goes to people, maybe the co the corporate side, and that's a huge question, because we, if you cannot take care of the, the, the prime resource, which is the player, I think that's where we really fail, even in the development, because we cannot create superstars from any sport because in this country. Because at some point, rugby, they are supposed to travel overseas to take part in the SBC World 7 Series, and players are taking to social media to vent their frustrations over non-payment. Uh, I'll give you a good example. Yes. yes. This is a man eat man society. I go get the money from whichever company. Take for example, this is Sablon. These are my supporters for volleyball for many years, over 11 years. And they have been giving volleyball a million every year, learn this tournament. And uh, we account to the letter. And what we told them, we do not want to handle that cash. Do it yourself. And uh, oh. just come during the final, give the winners the checks, buy the uniform yourself. Do everything. Give us Without only money going through your Yes. Hands. Give us only one hundred thousand to pay the referees. You see? And then they found that I mean, they were very comfortable. If you're not asking us that one million, we are going to support you until the cows come home. Unfortunately, COVID came and uh, because the I mean uh, the, the company's headquarter is in South Africa, we've not been able now to host it from twenty eighteen. But we were able to agree with them. It is not a matter of money. 
Even uh, Deep Heat, Deep Heat Company, they sponsor my beach volleyball. I tell them, we don't need that money. Keep it. One, I mean, 100,000 is for the athlete. 100,000 is for X, Y, Y, Z. Come with the check. Give the winners and give the, your product to the winners. Would you feel uncomfortable? You think Federation Chiefs can accept that from corporates? When because they come Safari here. Commanders and Mobile Service Provider mm. always wants to use that uh, uh, formula criteria while supporting Kenyan sporting activities. But the many people who are seeing me, our owners and stone up in Kwambia, wanataka pesa ziingie kwako, utoe nusu, uwapatie, ubaki na nusu. Utoe kat. Yes, and that's the reality. Ata kama munanisikia, that is why we do not develop sports in this country. And not just there. I would have named other institutions. But that, it was not uh, name, name, name naming. Name but calling. you can find out, even from the government, whether that is what happens. The previous government, sorry to say. I rest my case. So beach volleyball, how is it like? <laughs> beach volleyball, I told you, it is like fire in Hamilton. It's growing, <laughs> uh, it's growing because of the strong weed and uh, passing through uh, the dry grass. I can tell you we had a very successful beach volleyball in Mombasa, sponsored by Deep Heat. And uh, our threats went home with the money. And uh, other than that, we were able to be supported by other companies who gave us their products. We want to thank the uh, Big Tree Hotel because they give us the, the venue. And we had a fantastic, fantastic, I must say, uh, beach tour, which was our last one for the year 2022. We are now planning for year 2023. On Saturday, if I am thrown out by the delegates for not working, I'll have said yes, I did my bit. And what I'll do, I will just take the person who has defeated me, take him to my sponsors, not to break the what? The, 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 the momentum. And I'm not saying that I'm, being, I'm going to be beaten. But if it happened, because it has happened. I can tell you, the last time I was beaten, I was beaten because of Savlon. They said Budia gets a million. And you know, the Kawid went round that way. <laughs> <laughs> and people are convinced. The delegates, delegates, delegates are convinced. The, 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 the MD from the company said, what? Come and ask me how this money does what. But already, I was where? I was out. There was no time now to say, no, the MD has said it never happened. So you're saying the, the question was, how are we doing? Or we have uh, set up, the structures are still there. I must thank Moringa, I must thank Owino, I must thank uh, Ruth Rop and uh, Sari because of uh, being there for us. It has been working as an engine, I must say, well oiled. And uh, the sky is the limit. Our target now is uh, 2024, that is next year, uh, uh, Pali 2024 Olympics. And all African games, the Ghanaians, I'm told, they have pushed it to next year. So next year we shall have African games in Ghana and, um, and the Olympic in... Uh, but we didn't participate one game in Morocco, which will affect us big time. Because volleyball, a beach volleyball, unlike the convection of volleyball, you must earn point. What you call homologated tour. We missed one homologated tour in uh, Morocco and that one... Is going to hit us so i don't want to blame the person who will come over and say that uh, now they have started doing badly already we have that disadvantage of that one game that we missed thank you for coming through moses mbudia kenya awesome volleyball federation summer. deputy treasurer talking to us about you know the upcoming kvf election set for next weekend on saturday and it's all systems go preparations have been finalized to make sure that there is proper transitioning after you know idaga kioni uh, passed on and he was buried uh, in midweek on Wednesday and you know Charles Nyaberi who is also seeking to get elected in the same capacitizing top seat is acting uh, in that particular docket as we wait for the elections and we wish you good luck and well, all the very best. Him, thank the president and of CVB. She, she was, was very emotional. She cried throughout through the Zoom meeting and also she sent uh, the president of Zone 5. The president from Rwanda was here and he went all the way to Kiamwangi and uh, buried Mr. Kioni. So the African continent was well represented. The um, president from Togo sent his message, the president from uh, Zambia, the president, quite a number. Yeah. You can see what, I mean, uh, who Waidaka Kioni was with that kind of uh, support that we got from without. Asante sana, Mr. Asante. Moses Mbudia, for coming through, and thank you. thank you for joining us and talking to us about the state of volleyball in the country. Don't go away, stay tuned. We're going to uh, watch the you know highlights of Colin Sinjera, one of the all-time try scorers, before we come up with the interview regarding 2023 Bats Cup currently underway at Nyai National Stadium. Don't go away, stay tuned. It's the touchline.